In the mid to late Jurassic period of what is now Asia, where pterosaurs had long since ruled the skies, nature was experimenting with new flyers. This was a period where we see some of the first true ancestors of birds begin to evolve, but they were not alone in their pursuit of the skies. A few jumps across the branches of the evolutionary tree see Scansoriopterygidae, meaning climbing wings, develop around the same time. These animals share many features with other members of paraapes, the group containing birds and their closest living relatives, such as feathers, reduced tail vertebrae, semi ornate carpal, a half moon shaped wrist bone, that allowed for bird like folding motions in the hand, and possibly the ability of powered flight. But what truly sets these animals apart is their wings themselves. Unlike other non avian dinosaurs and birds that have heavily feathered wings, Scansoriopterygidae utilize membrous wings giving them the appearance of little feathery dragons, or more accurately, some sort of strangely beautiful bat-bird hybrid. Paleobiologists reached this conclusion after they noticed a unique styliform wrist bone similar to bats and pterosaurs, as well as their extremely long third fingers, which had sufficiently more length than the first and second digits of the hand. They also had fairly unique ribbon-like tail feathers that may have been used for infraspecific display. Many adaptations seen within the Scansoropterygians suggest they were excellent climbers and lived most of their lives in the trees, a lifestyle not yet seen in any other non-avian dinosaurs. Their stiffened tail, elongated third digits, and feet well designed for perching in a way similar to primitive birds supports this hypothesis. It's possible that many earlier species such as Yi Chi were only capable of gliding flight instead of true powered flight. Scientists explain that its gliding capabilities may have been similar to the New Zealand kakapo, a species of parrot that glides from the trees, controlling its descent with flapping movements. The abdominal region of species like Yi Chi and Embopteryx show fragments of bone and gastroliths, stomach stones used for digestion, suggesting that they were omnivorous, consuming invertebrates, small vertebrates such as salamanders which occupy the same range, as well as plant matter. Unlike the terrors of the skies we see in movies and read about in books, Scansoriopterygians were very small dinosaurs weighing on average 300 to 380 grams depending on the species. This small size likely put them on the menu for some of the larger flies of the time, the pterosaurs. Luckily, the dense forests that they called home provided them with a lot of cover and safety from their would-be aggressors. As it stands now, paleontologists have yet to find any evidence supporting fire breathing in any of the species. At the moment, it's unclear why this interesting group of dinosaurs never made it to the end of the Jurassic. Due to their small size and fragility of their bodies, conditions in which these animals fossilize are extremely rare. Since this family is relatively new to science, it's possible we may find specimens dating back to a more recent time period. Who knows what this lineage may have evolved into? had they continued through to the present day. Maybe they did. Perhaps they grew large enough to steal sheep and shiny trinkets like magpies do, igniting frenzied legends worldwide, living in secrecy in the mountains and forests, waiting to swoop down on any unlucky traveler who gets too close to their horn. Yeah, highly unlikely, but remember, in a world this big, there's always something more to say. Thanks for watching.